Tamam. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, hello. Now it is. Now it is. Hello. We'll start in about five minutes. It is no sound. No sound. No sound. Hello. That's okay. Good afternoon, everyone. We start in about five minutes. I think in 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Jerry, it's only quarter past. Uh, is that the right time? No. Quarter past 12? That's wrong. I thought, yeah. Yeah. It's just 26 minutes past 12. Yeah, we're supposed to start at half 12. Yes. Half 12, yeah. So four minutes. That's four minutes. Is there anyone to check oh, remote okay. participation? Is that on or off? That's on. That's on. Hello, Ginella, can you hear us? Hello, Gunella, can you hear us?
Hello, Ganella. Can you hear us? We can't hear you. Like you're not sure whether I'm here? I'm here. Hi, do you want me closer? No. Well, he does he does he doesn't want me closer. <laughs> like really? Ginella, we can't hear you. I think you can hear us, but we can't hear you. Ganella, we love you, but we still can't hear you.
Donc là, du coup, je peux peut-être remettre que, que si les gens veulent parler, on va plus les entendre. Oui, like c'est ça. Um, Jovan Fulba, Lydia, qui vous avez été le head de la Foundation Jovan, est maintenant l'exécutif, l'un des directeurs de la Haïla Volcano de la Coopération Digitale. Il voulait vous rencontrer et il est vraiment intéressé à faire une contribution à l'accessibilité à la Haïla Volcano. Panel. Uh, the, the contributions are open until November 30th, but at any time you want to communicate with him, oh, and so he we, really uh, wants so to have you. Do that by for, uh, Zoom uh, or by remote participation or by video. Um, we or could talk, but the, 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 the most important thing at this point is that you get your, your, your main points. I'm sure you, I know you already have it prepared, and put it into a contribution format and okay. send it to them to to is he here this afternoon? He is here. If you can, we, can we meet at, let's say, this is on from oh. to half one. I have another meeting at half, 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 half three. I will, I will, um, can you get up to the Diplo booth? We're right at the entrance. I, I don't know what you have. Yeah. 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 So I will ask Jovan for 3.30 meeting. I'll be there about half three. Yeah, okay. We'll be in at the Diplo booth right now. He is not Diplo, he's on leave of absence because yeah. he needs to be objective. But he specifically said he wanted to meet with okay. well, we'll be there about half three, four o'clock. We'll okay. be there with, and maybe no we'll matter matter what what we'll can, we can, can I have another yeah. one of your cards? Shirley. So I have one for me and I give one to you. Yeah. Shirley? Thank you very much. Virginia, I'm so, so pleased to see you. I'm really I'm glad to see you guys. So, so pleased. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so Great. much. All right, take care. Now, she's never worried about that. I'm so good. Fucked up for Virginia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have still problem. We have a problem, yeah? Because we cannot hear from the remote participation. So can we see her what she says in the um, text box? Yeah, she she will type her experiences. We can see that. Okay, so then she's going to leave the meeting. Then you know, she's going to type her. All right. So we get going.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, how's the microphone working? Is it okay? Do I need a mic? <laughs> I'm Irish, I don't need a microphone. Welcome to the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability face-to-face -face meeting for IGF 2018. We're a small crowd, but we're a very important crowd. So welcome to every one of you. I know Gunella is online. We've had difficulties with the online system, so she can hear us, but we can't hear her. So we're going to ask Gunella to uh, send us a text. We haven't really got a big agenda here today. We have two items on the agenda. One is a proposal from Shadi Abu Zara, and the other is basically to look at how is the accessibility for this meeting, and then we're going to open it up to anyone who wants to say anything about anything, whether that be Christmas presents, or turkeys, <laughs> or DCAD, or accessibility, or disability. Totally open to anything you want to say on any subject, okay? So, have we got Shadi on the line? Just a moment. Okay, well, let's, um, Shadi's not on yet, Shadi so. Is not yet, but Shabir needs a phone. Shabir, can we hear Shabir? Okay, uh, we have Shabir and we have Gunella, but we can't hear them. First thing I wanna do is maybe go around the room and see who's present, if that's possible. Can we do that? Paddy, have you had a microphone? There's no mic uh, event. So okay. Luis. Luis might have. Hello, Luis. Hi. Have we a microphone? We have a mic to go around. So we cannot hear from the remote participants. Okay. So Paddy, can you go around and get people's yeah. names, make sure yeah. they say that that would be strong? Yeah. Okay, go on. Can you mute them? Mm. No, I okay. can mute them. Wait, Luis might be able to sort this out. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we yeah. can do this while okay. we're done. Okay. 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 Sorry. Uh, my name is Dr. Tan Tokang. I come from Myanmar, Burma. Uh, we are supporting uh, to 150 community centers in our country, and actually there are libraries as well. So I just want to come here to learn how we can help to the disabilities in our community as well. That's my reason of joining here. Tant, you can call me Tant. Tant, T-H-E-N-T. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I'm here. Hi. Hi, I'm Nidhi Goyal. Um, I'm representing a women's rights organization called Point of View, where I head a program on disability, gender, and sexuality, and I also run a nonprofit called Rising Flame um, back in Mumbai in India, which works for rights of people with disabilities. Hi, I'm Judy Okite from uh, Kenya, I representing Association for Accessibility and Equality. Hello and thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm Ginger or Virginia Park. People know me under both names. Um, I work with Diplo Foundation, but both personally and professionally, I think these um, issues are important to all of us. So I'm happy to be joining you and, uh, listening, and, and to the open format so we can say anything we want later. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Baldiv Greval. Um, I'm an academic. I teach English literature at a university in Germany. I'm at the IGF this year to present a study of reporting mechanisms that give us data on gender inclusivity in discussions and workshops at the IGF. Um, I'm also representing point of view. Thank you. Baldeep Greval. Baldeep. G R E W A L. Oh, hi, I'm uh, Peter Crosby. I'm uh, autistic. I'm here representing Autistic Minority International uh, amongst other groups. Um, obviously, my main interest here is uh, cognitive access accessibility and um, the so-called uh, invisible disabilities, except, of course, they're not invisible to us. Uh, 
Um, my name is Gudrun Stock. I work for the European Commission in, uh, in a unit in charge of the Web Accessibility Directive, and I'm fairly new in that unit, so I'm here to learn. My name is John Dada. I work for a rural women's organization in Nigeria, and um, we pride ourselves in being non-discriminatory for any uh, disadvantages or disabilities. I'm Peter Major. I'm the Vice Chair of the UN Commission on Science and Technology for Development, and I think I'm an honorary member of the Dynamic Coalition. I, I have been working with you uh, for ages. Thank you. I'm uh, Derek Cogburn. I'm the Founding Executive Director of the American University Institute on Disability and Public Policy. Uh, we're about to celebrate our 10th year uh, next year, so we're getting ready for our 10th year anniversary. Uh, Dr. Tant, just to let you know, uh, for most of our first 10 years, we focused on Southeast Asia. Uh, and so we have partners in Myanmar that we can put you in contact with um, uh, that focus on disability and independent living uh, in uh, Myanmar. Uh, I'm also a professor in the School of International Service in the International Communication and International Development Program. I'm also a professor in the Kogod School of Business in the Department of Information Technology and Analytics and co-director of our Internet Governance Lab. Welcome one and all. Welcome one and all. And welcome to Shabir and to Ginella who are on the, uh, on the web connection. Unfortunately, we can't hear them, but I think they can hear us. So welcome to everybody. We really have two things on the agenda today. We're, we're trying to find how we, as a group of people, of individuals, people who are interested in disabilities and people who are interested in DCAD, can connect better with other dynamic coalitions within IGF. I think we've heard criticism during the IGF here that we come together, we meet, we have a great time, we all agree with each other, then we go home and we talk about other things. So Shadi Abuzara had a uh, request that we find a way of interacting during the year with other dynamic coalitions. And unfortunately, Shadi isn't on the line, so I'm, I'm <coughs> going to try and present it today. So how can we do that? We have contacts through the Secretariat for IGF, and we can do it. But who is going to put their name forward to say, if you find a different di co di dynamic coalition, we will contact them, we will talk to them, we say every second month between now and Berlin for the next IGF. Who here is prepared to put up their hand and say, I'll do that? <laughs> you do it at all, Derek. That. This, is, this is Derek. Um, so one of the things that we've done for a, a number of uh, what we call transnational advocacy networks, and DCAD or DICAD is, is one of those, is we have provided infrastructure and support to those networks to be able to work together uh, over distance uh, to develop uh, detailed policy formulation, to work together, to get to know each other better, and to prepare for international meetings. So we'd actually be happy to support uh, the DICAD. Do you say DICAD or DCAD? My team has been uh, debating that. Uh, <laughs> so we would be happy to work with KRU and our colleagues at the ITU. Uh, we have Zoom uh, accounts. We have other web conferencing tools. Uh, we have a variety of um, content management systems and so forth. So we would be happy to support a, a monthly meeting if you wanted. Um, uh, where we could uh, reach out to different uh, uh, dynamic coalitions and uh, we could look at the document that we prepared. Uh, we prepared a, a short document for IGF uh, 2018 to look at the other dynamic coalitions to look at where their overlap might um, be with the interests of the, the DICAT. Um, Midi. Hello, Midi. Oh, I just wanted to know, um, since it's my 
first meeting. I just want to know the di other dynamic coalitions. We're looking at all the other coalitions and seeing how we can make connections. Yeah. Is that, um, so has someone taken up uh, the sort of work with DC, DC for gender? Because I'll be very happy to have that kind of cross conversation. Midi, will you make sure that we have your contact details before we leave today, please? Absolutely. Very good, very good. Anyone else who'd want to put their name forward? We don't know which DC is yet, but we'll find some. Okay, there can Midi, that's I good. I can help you there. Judy, is it? Okay, yes. Judy, thank you. I'd like to pitch in too, um, but I'll leave here. Okay, so we have three names. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll, I'll bully a couple of more people between now and next year. <laughs> okay, and so how are we doing with Yanela? Yes, uh, remote participation should be okay now, so could you please ask uh, remote okay, participants to... Okay, where's the microphone? Yes, here. We think the remote participation should be working now. Judy and Shabir, can you hear us? Ganella. Oh, sorry. Can you, Gunella and Shabir, can you hear us? We can't hear you, so I don't know if you can hear us. Any remote participants speaking? Sorry, everyone in the room, but we're we're trying to get give everyone the opportunity to have their <coughs> their, their uh, to be heard. There, what we want to do is cover what has access been like, and then I'll open it up. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So while, while our technician here is still trying to sort out our remote participation, what we want to try and get an idea is how has access been at IGF 2018. We, we know that Cengitai, Luis, Eleonora, they've all been brilliant in trying to help us, being, and I, I really uh, am appreciative for the amount of effort they put in. But today we want to hear how successful it has been. So, <laughs> so we can then feed back and say, well, look, thanks, but there is still, still these issues. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start at registration. Did anyone do online registration? And how was it? And how was that? I will start, but um, I was very easy. I uh, know, as a matter of fact, I was successful. The problem it's Virginia, was. Virginia, is it? I'm sorry, Ginger or Virginia. Ginger. Okay. Um, sorry for not identifying myself. That's an important thing I had to remember. Um, as you know, I am an advocate of online participation and, and remote participation, which is supported brilliantly by the DCAD. I did not have a particular disability problem accessing as a, as a user with advantages. I still had serious problems connecting with my account, but I did find that the support team was willing and did rapidly it took a long time, but they were constantly responding to me, and they did respond to the difficulties I was having. So that's one positive point. The online support for me was very good. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, it's Peter here. So I'm speaking from an autistic point of view. Well, I, I mean, I just 
something I've wanted to say for the last three days here is the IGF website is it's in, in terms of access, uh, certainly from my point of view in terms of cognitive access, uh, it's, uh, what, what's the word I can use? I would say it's an absolute disgrace. Um, I don't think don't people, agrees with you. I, I don't think people uh, really have any idea what accessibility means in terms of the internet. Um, just for uh, fun, I ran a, just an online uh, accessibility um, audit application on the site. On just a one page, it threw up 300 issues or possible issues. I mean, I just cannot believe that that site is online, to be really honest. From the very beginning, on the very first page, the use of text in an image, image box, it's like rule number one, not, not to do. Uh, from an autistic point of view, the, the lack of coherence, of, of structure, of consistence, consistency, of predictability, it, it's just something really to be seen to believe. The, the use of rollovers that make no sense, the use of colours that make no sense, and to, to cut a long story short, I was not able to register. I had to get someone to help me who's done it before. I could not find my way through it. Uh, but I, I just can't believe that I'm the only one who, who has difficulty with the site. And the fact that no one's actually, it seems no one's actually said anything seems to bring home to me just how low down the list of priorities uh, accessibility and accessible websites actually are. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. We'll feed, we will feed that back. Um, um, I hear noise from the speakers. Have we got our online participants? I just wanted to briefly add to what Peter said. Oh, is, oh, okay. Sorry, who is this? Still speaking? Okay, Baldi, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I, I just wanted to add to what Peter said. I'm autistic too, and I had a similar issue. Th I mean, let's start with the fonts on the website. Um, it was. It took me hours to just get my registration done because either the fonts would keep changing from one page to the next, or the sizes would keep changing, or the the colors would keep changing. And I mean, how hard is it to like maintain a a like a sustained format across pages and it would just be like Times New Roman 12 or like j just have like a standard thing that we can follow. I mean, it's not helping anyone if I if I can't make sense of what's online. And then like with the schedule, because I had to like plan the three days that I'm here, especially because I'm also assisting my colleague, um, I can't work with the online schedule because it's it's, it makes me anxious enough to know that I'm responsible for somebody else's schedule too. But then when I can't work with the online schedule, schedule and they didn't have on the first day in the morning, they didn't have printed out schedules uh, on site here at the IDF. So basically I spent half the first day a ball of anxiety, not able to figure out where to go, what to do, until I, I was able to finally pick up pr printed copies of the schedule and then make some sense of what's happening with terms of the event layouts. It's just a lot of time and effort wasted which could be avoided with simple um, formatting techniques. Uh, there were three versions of the online schedule. There was a PDF, which was absolutely dreadful. There was an online uh, interactive schedule. Interactive That's schedule, the one I'm talking about. It was a nightmare. I found better, but not very good. And there was a spreadsheet. Did you see the spreadsheet? Uh, I, I, I did not see. That's what I'm talking about. I did, I did not see the spreadsheet. I saw the okay. PDF. I saw the interactive version. Um, and it's also exhausting, you know, like at some point I give up. At some point I'm just like, okay, I, I, I don't know what to do with this and I, I can't take this further. And I mean, I'm saying uh, being autistic and having to navigate these things has a lot to do with stamina. After a point, my brain will not function. Um, so if we can come up with some kind of support for that. Okay, that's, that's excellent because the fact that they had done some work on the spreadsheet, which I think is quite accessible, but didn't tell people about it in itself is, is an issue. The fact that people can't register means that they can't attend. So I think that's very important. Yeah. Derek? 
thank you. This is Derek. Um, so I just want to echo the last two points. And, and what I would say is um, the, the IGF is hosted by the United Nations. We know the United Nations has the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and should be an exemplar of the rights that are identified in the C, uh, CRPD, including the right to accessibility and the access to information. And so it really is a shame that a, a UN hosted organization can't follow its own, you know, the, own, the convention that, that, that's under the auspices of the UN. And I think we should, uh, in the notes and what we send forward, should highlight that there are international standards that they should adhere to. You know, WCAG 2.0, they should not have a website that does not meet WCAG 2.0 standards, full stop. And, you know, to be an internet governance forum, you might think that the water conference, you know, might be a little bit farther behind, perhaps, but the internet governance forum should be at the forefront of electronic and digital access. And I think it's a shame. I agree with you, and we will be making that point. Um, um, so, sorry. okay, so who else? Can I speak? Okay, Nidhi here. Um, I actually wanted to just add to some of the things. So when you mentioned, Jerry, there were multiple formats. I came across only two, and that they didn't work great for me. The PDF uh, version did, which was really not okay, and the other one. So that's where Baldeep and I both struggled with the agenda and the, uh, the slot timing, et cetera. Um, the other thing is when you, Derek, thank you for mentioning the UNCRPD because um, I was on the plenary um, last evening and the plenary stages did not have any access uh, for someone on a wheelchair. And that was amazing because that, it's, so A, there was no one on a wheelchair there. That doesn't mean that the space doesn't need not be accessible because that gives out a statement that if you're not, if you're in a, in, in a position that you're on a wheelchair, you will, this space will not be for you. So it's also sort of the larger comment that it makes. So I, I was really surprised. And it's not just that, because then we're also leaving out people who have arthritis and other issues. They may not be able to take stairs. So we're just um, keeping some of that in mind in the physical space as well um, around accessibility. But when you try to register on site here, you had problems. Do you want to mention something there? Okay, um, I didn't have much of a challenge because when I came, um, well, online I could easily um, register. Um, physically, they had um, a lift because at the entrance there were steps but there was a lift on the side that um, they allowed me to use to get to the registration, so I didn't take like more than five minutes. So it was okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I'm spending a lot of time on registration because if you can't register for a conference, you can't attend. And nothing that you do at the conference is registered. Derek is doing a lot of data mining and that, but if you can't even get in the door, your, your voice can't be heard. And that's why I'm spending such a long time and why I'm trying to gather the, these stories together. It is such a crucial issue. A point of order, if, if I may interrupt. Um, because I am new and I do not understand all the complexities and nuances, I realize I'm nodding at you and it's not appropriate <laughs> feedback. So it's what okay. would be the, no, I'm but what is, what, what is the feedback uh, to, to give the cues that we want to give. Do we have an audible and visual? If there's time or if you want to address it, that would help me to know. What, how do I not at Derek, he could see me, but you, you and um, other colleagues cannot see me nodding or, or showing my, my agreement. How do we do that in, in a meeting like this or in any meeting? What's come appropriate? And, come and have a coffee afterwards, we talk about <laughs> Okay, it. No sorry. problem. Okay, so I want, I, <laughs> I won't find you though, that's the only problem. <laughs> okay, let, uh, I, I think we've stressed the importance of registration. It's something that's so often forgotten, the registration and the whole, uh, that joining process. If you can't do it, you can't get involved. How about getting here and um, physically getting to the, re to, the, to the building? How was that from the airport or from your, from your home? Was that okay?
Okay, Judy here, Jerry. Okay. Yeah, Judy here. Um, I had requested for, for transportation from the airport, and I was told that uh, um, the public transport in Paris is accessible, which is not. Um, we tried it with a colleague. We got out of the airport. Um, we got a taxi to the metro. Um, the step from the metro, from where you're stepping on to get onto the metro is too big. So we had to come back and just use the taxi. Um, from where I, I am at the hotel, it's impractical to walk 300 meters to get to the metro, which is not working. And then walk again another 300 meters from the metro to UNESCO. Um, on the first day, on Monday, um, there was an issue because I had to use um, the exit because that's more accessible. And of course, the security could not allow us in. So we had to get in touch with the IGF secretariat and request that we need to use that, that entrance. But later on, it was explained that, prob that probably it was because um, the president was coming in, so security was a bit edgy, so try to understand. But the, the last two days, it's been okay. I've used that, uh, that exit. Um, coming into the building, I'm, I'm surprised that they have uh, clear windows on, on, on the, I don't know whether they're supposed to be walls or, or, or doors. And actually it's not even persons with disability who've hit themselves on those windows. They're persons, they're normal persons. I've, I mean, I've been there and people have hit themselves because they're not sure whether there's a window, whether, is it a window or a door? Whether it's open or whether it's closed. I'm, I'm so surprised that that could happen in at the UN, at the UNESCO. Um, coming into the building, um, my my issue is there. There is a sign at the washroom that this is an accessible washroom, but when you go inside, that's not what's happening. It's not an accessible washroom, and so I mean, being at the 13th IGF, and I have to go into the bathroom and somebody has to help me in there, that is too low. That is as low as we could have gotten. I, I remember in 2014, our report, um, DICAD 2014, we had made a suggestion that uh, somebody with an accessibility knowledge should be part of the secretariat, that when they choose the venue, the person has to audit and make sure that when we're talking about accessibility then, that one is factored in. And so now here at the IGF Paris, I have to spend as little time here because I can't use the washroom. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Judy. That's, that's comprehensive and I've taken a lot of notes which we will pass on. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else want to comment about, well, Judy moved on there as well to the accessibility of the venue here. So does anyone want to talk about just physically getting to the venue or the accessibility of the venue itself? to actually just um, add in between the online registration and the venue accessibility, one thing that I wanted to add was when collection of passes um, and people really struggled um, and there were obviously very long queues, etc. There are also people who need assistance, who cannot stand for so long um, with disabilities. So I don't know if that's in, in many conferences there is sort of a separate queue or a separate provision for people with disabilities, if something like that can be instituted, um, if that's a possibility at all. Because many, many people, um, particularly the day before IGF began, spent like two hours and then still returned without a pass. Okay, that's fine. Any, any other, just while you have the mic, Midi, is there anything else you'd like to comment on about the accessibility of the, the venue or the, the conference itself? I'm just thinking, Jerry, like, um, as a blind uh, person or a person with visual impairment, um, I wouldn't, anyway, the space is too large for me to navigate without an assistance. So 
um, you know, have there been conversations around participations or registrations of assistance or provisions of voluntary support? Um, this time my organization could somehow sort of bring in um, someone because also Baldeep lives closer and could come in to assist me. Um, but then how's the participation of someone like me from next year or how have you been or others with blindness have been participating where assistance is required and then that becomes a challenge. So that's something I'm leaving open for. Maybe. Okay, Midi, can I, can I challenge you with a question then? Yes, sure. If somebody asked you at registration, do you need support? Would you find that insulting or would you find, oh, they're, they're, they're asking me because they want to help? Which would you find? Which would you think? Um, at the registration. Yeah, if during the registration said, would process. You, would you need support? It's a simple question. So I would yeah. give You'd a simple be happy with response. That, would you? Yeah, I would give a simple response. If I needed help at that time, I would say yes, it'll be great if you could support me. If I didn't, I would say no, I'm okay, thanks. Good, because I would, I would be the same. I would say, yeah, I don't I'd think rather it's be an asked insulting and get the support than not be asked and not get the support. But Correct. some people would find that no, demeaning. I, I think that's what we're, we always say, that it's best to ask if someone needs support and how would they need support rather than sort of forcing them or denying. So okay. I think that's a very simple question. Derek. Uh, thank you, this is Derek. Um, just to follow on Needy's comment, I think um, one of the places where that would be really well done is on the registration uh, form to, to say what kind of um, uh, assistance or accommodations do you need or do you want? And that's now done months in advance, you know, so that they can get ready. And if they need to secure volunteers, if they need to train the volunteers, um, you know, they could do that in advance so that they're ready for you, you know, to come. Um, they could communicate with persons um, that have indicated they need accommodations to say, come to the front, you know, we'll make sure that you come in, we'll have your volunteer waiting for you. That wouldn't be too hard to do. Other conferences, uh, you know, do those kinds of things. Um, and Jerry, I'll just, um, since I have the floor, just one second. Um, we have a report. <laughs> we have a report that will come out on the 3rd of December um, for the International Day for Persons with Disabilities on Accessible Global Governance where we've um, both done interviews and surveys of people participating, uh, people with disabilities participating in UN conferences around the world in different types of uh, domains from um, uh, uh, disaster risk reduction to you know, economic development and so forth. And we're highlighting all of these problems along the, the lines, Jerry, that you're pointing to from the registration to the, the, the transportation, to the hotels, you know, right through to the physical features of the rooms. And uh, I'll make sure that everybody gets a copy of that. But, but Nidhi... Can I, can I challenge you? The way that I challenge Nidhi as sure. well. What have you done to make sure that that's in accessible format? The document? Yep. Oh, of course. Every, you know, everything that we try to do is in accessible format. So the document, okay. the PDF, and the website uh, are accessible for screen readers. Uh, we try to, um, now frankly this is one of the areas that we could work on more, is to also make sure that it's accessible for people with cognitive and developmental uh, disabilities. So we don't produce the document in an alternative format and that's something that we should do um, as well. Brilliant, but in terms brilliant. of the... Thank you, because we often mm -hmm. find that organizations who are promoting accessibility are not, often not accessible themselves. And I think of some website checkers which themselves are not accessible. <laughs> so, uh, pardon me for challenging no, you. No, you're 100% right. I think it is important that we do challenge, yeah. in, a, in a nice way. No, you're 100%. In, in an Irish way, but we do challenge. <laughs> you know? You're 100% right, but just to continue the challenge, I think the point is between now and next year in Berlin, I think it is, we, should, we should start pushing right now to make sure that IGF 2019 is as accessible as possible from start to finish, from registration to speaking, you know, on the floor. Absolutely, 100% hosting IGF 2019. Judy. Thank you, Jerry. Um, just to mention that, yes, on the registration form, um, there is the spot where you're supposed to indicate whether you have a disability. What we need to find out is what they do with that information. Because still, when you come, it's like a new information to them. But, almost invisible on the website for blind, for vision impaired people. It's very, very poorly highlighted. I've heard that comment before. 
just a quick two finger if I may, Jerry. Um, so we should look at what that question is. It shouldn't say, do you have a disability? That sh I don't know what it says, but I'd like to follow up and to see what it says. It shouldn't say that. I mean, there are sort of best practices in, in what you should ask. And I think it should more so be what kind of accommodations uh, do you want or do you foresee needing any accommodations you know, when you're here uh, to make sure that there's something to be done with it. <laughs> so yeah. not just asking a question, you know, are you a person with a disability? It should say, what accommodations do you need? So then, Jerry, what's done with it should be, how are you addressing those accommodations for that person? Yeah, exactly. And there should be somebody at the secretariat that's following up on everybody that has responded that way and is treating that person as a guest, you know, that's coming to the conference. And what and, we're doing at this meeting, Derek, is yeah. seeing have they done that. That's yeah. exactly what we're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Dembele from, uh, is here this morning and, and hasn't said anything. Would you like to add to this? I know, I know your, I think your first language is French, so I'm wondering are you okay with the speed of the meeting? Pouvez-vous comprendre parce que nous parlons très vite? Okay, vous allez bien. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Then. All right. Sorry, the committee again just to respond to what Derek said. The form does ask what support would you need, but it's not an actionable column. That's the problem. And many conferences do ask what support that do you need, and that's not an actionable column either. In fact. Um, so there are two examples from uh, global conferences that I want to bring here because we want to propose this for Berlin IGF is one that um, there is a global women's rights forum called uh, by this organization called AWID, Association for Women's Rights and Development. Um, what they simply do is that they support your participation financially. Um, they try and support with an assistance. So if they say we'll support a person um, with a disability with a scholarship, that automatically means that they support um, and a person to assist them as well. Uh, the uh, sorry, just before you move on from that one, you, I missed the name of the organization. Association for Women's Rights and Development, AWID okay, for short. Yeah. So they have a forum once in three years. The second thing is when we're talking about UN, there is um, the Conference of the States Parties that happens in New York um, at the UN, which is on the UNCRPD, and there is no assistance provided even there. So it's a huge sort of, it'll be a difficult advocacy, but I think we should take it forward because independent participation is something that for many of us is really, really important. Um, yeah. Okay, we've, we've maybe 10 minutes or so left. So I'm wondering, can we hear our remote participants now and get some comments on remote participation? Shabir, I, we can't hear you. Maybe, maybe Erich. This is sound coming from Karina, Viragra, but probably she is not listening. This is sound from a remote participant. This was sound coming from remote participant Karina Virarda, but probably she was not listening in the session. And Eric, if you want to speak, you have the floor. Okay, Eric prefers to type, so they don't want to. Okay, so if we give Arif time to type and we can read out what he says. Anyone else remote? Uh, Pinella there? No, they are not there. Only Karina and Erich are there. Okay, we'll give him a moment to write his comments. Shabia sent me a text. Okay. Can I, can I read yeah, it? Please read it. Yeah, Shabir, who uh, has been participating, sent Keoru a text, and Keoru is going to read it out. Yes. This is from Shabir. 
We have tried again and again to make it possible the remote participation of persons with disabilities, but the remote tool, WebEx, for the IDF is not accessible and no alternate arrangements were made. Therefore, moving forward, it is highly emphasized that WebEx should no longer be used at IDF unless the developer takes serious action to make it accessible and usable for persons with disabilities. Moreover, the instance at the decision-making level at IDF to use WebEx because it is free results in people with disabilities remain unable to completely participate in IDF even remotely. This represents a clear constant in what UN uh, rhetoric through UNCRPD and other instruments and what is being practical, practiced in these meetings for years. This needs to be stopped and IDF should be made truly accessible for persons with disabilities. That's all. Thank you, Keoro. This highlights one very important issue, or well, two important issues. One, the lack of knowledge of accessibility from IGF, but it also highlights that only rich people and rich organizations can attend. Real people can't. And I think that's very, very important. If we only hear from the rich people, the, 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 those who have resources, you won't hear the real issues. So I think that's a key, key issue. I make it 13.22, we have about eight minutes left. I'm going to open the floor to anything you want to talk about. No, I've changed my mind, anything except for Christmas. <laughs> anything you want to talk about which you think is relevant to IGF, please. Peter. Um, thank you, uh, it's Peter here. Um, I just wanted to just comment on, is it, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong here, your guidelines the, the DCAD guidelines that are available online from, I believe, 2015, is that right? Um, I mean, I, I went through them. I also went through your references that you, you cite there, uh, a source material. There is a total absence in those guidelines anywhere of anything to do with access for, I mean, I'll speak specifically for, for myself, for autistic people. There's absolutely nothing in, in the, the guidelines that you refer to, the word autism does not even appear, but then that's perhaps understandable. Some of them go back over 10 years. And I think it's high time. You, would, you like, would you help us improve those documents? Well, sure. Yeah. But there are, already, there are, for example, guidelines online, uh, for example, Scottish Autism Society, the Irish Autism Society, publish online guides to uh, autism-friendly events. And to be honest, it's, it's not rocket science what we need. It's, it's, a lot of it's just very simple stuff. Um, basically, for us, our, just so it's clear, and it's also the website, you know, the world comes at us very fast. We take in a lot of information. And what we're constantly seeking to do is just to, to uh, calm the environment and to reduce this information. So, for example, uh, just I'll give a, a tiny personal example. Before I came here on Monday, I spent almost uh, quite a while on Sunday evening going on Google Earth, looking at what the front of the building looks like, so that when I came here, that was not a new piece of information for me. I knew what it looked like, the entrance. I went through it and found online yeah. photographs of all these rooms yeah. and information about the rooms, so once more, that's, in, that's information I don't have to deal with on the day. So even a simple thing like putting up photographs of the rooms would be a real help for us. Uh, I found the signage here uh, pretty well non-existent. To get here, to find this room today, I had to ask someone to find the rooms I wanted on the first day. I had, I had to ask people. Um, and just one small thing to give an example of perhaps what the future holds is that I would like to see that applause is prohibited in these meetings. It's something that started to happen at or, or autism conferences and conferences where autistic people are. Noise is a real problem in one way or another for nearly all of us. And I think it would be an, not so much a gesture, but a recognition that people need to start modifying their behaviors 
in order that people with disabilities can be included. And that's where disability comes from. Disability is created by people's behaviours. And the idea of having no applause and having, well, the, what's usually used is what's called flap wars, which is raving your hands in the air. If we could have that, for example, in room one, that would send a fantastic message to developers and, and clients about stopping and thinking about what steps they can take to make their work and what they're doing more inclusive and less exclusive. Because disability results from exclusion. Yeah, sorry. If I could stop you there just to let others in because we're running out of time. But uh, I'd make two points about signage. You know, you're absolutely right. My friend here, who beside me is here as my personal assistant, his only disability is that he's Irish, right? <laughs> but he had huge difficulties with signage at this meeting, and we still don't know where room 10, 11, and 12 are. We still haven't found them. I was trying to go to a meeting in room 10, and we couldn't find it. Yeah? So, Judy, we still couldn't find it. I still don't know where they are. Can I open the floor again, because we're, we're almost out of time, just to anyone who makes a general comment about... Just two quick things, if I could. Derek. So just one, I'd like to ask to make sure that everybody here is on the DICAD mailing list. Um, so if you're not, uh, you're not needy. So Keru, can we somehow make sure that we somehow either capture them or something to make sure you're on the DICAD mailing list? Because uh, what, what I'd like to do, Jerry, is, is, is I would like us to be able to meet every month as a DICAD from here on out. So 12 meetings leading up to, or so, leading up to next year's um, IGF. So I if we can, you know, we're exactly happy to host those meetings, but it doesn't matter who's hosting it as long as we try to make it as accessible as possible, but that we can meet on a regular basis and everybody can not just be limited to this time, but we can contribute uh, over the course of time and over distance. Okay, I'm, um, I've two things that I want to say before we finish, but uh, we've three minutes left, room for one more contribution. Yeah, just well, uh, thank you. Um, my name is Jovan Kurbalia. I am executive. Sorry, say that slowly. Hello. Your name. My name is Jovan Kurbalia. Okay. I'm uh, uh, executive director of the uh, uh, high-level panel on digital cooperation. The reason why uh, why I'm first I'm sorry for coming uh, the last part of the meeting, and uh, I would like to to use this opportunity to invite uh, your community to contribute to the deliberation of the uh, high-level panel. The sorry, panel on? On digital cooperation. Digital cooperation. It was sorry, established sorry. by UN Secretary General, and the main aim is to outline the future of digital cooperation, including issues which are of higher importance for the, for the disabilities community, like question of inclusion, like question of participation. And this is the right moment to, uh, to uh, have your voice uh, heard by the, by the top authorities at the UN, addressing some of the, of the, of the issues that could be, I guess, uh, solved in a simple way, like uh, signage or question of the, of the use of WebEx, to the more complex issues uh, uh, of uh, general uh, strengthening of participation of people with disabilities, taking into consideration some core principles of your community, uh, sharing it with the internet industry, with the international organization, things that you have been doing. But this is the occasion when those principles and those inputs could get high visibility and, uh, and uh, necessary place in discussion in the UN and uh, um, private uh, discussion with the private sector. Now, I would like to, st to encourage you strongly to, to make the contribution. I'm available to help in uh, whatever is uh, needed practically. And uh, that's, that's basically my message. And thank you for uh, uh, letting me uh, having this short introduction. Uh, thank you. Yeah. We heard about that panel yesterday at the plenary panel in room one, and I wanted to learn more about it. And I'm delighted that you've come. I really, really welcome you. And please come up to us after the meeting and give us some more details, contact details, or whatever. And, and, and the, short, the short version, Jerry, is have them implement the Convention on the Rights of Persons with that's Disabilities. It. Full that's stop. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> If they implement the convention, we would be happy. Well, uh, you know, uh, let me just comment on, on, on this. Uh, everything is available. 
we know what to do, you know what to do, you have been raising your voice, but we shouldn't waste any opportunity to make these uh, uh, voices louder and to, uh, to uh, str uh, strengthen this, issue, uh, this question, like implementation of the Convention. And I know you have been working a lot on the, these issues. Don't worry, we're Irish, we have loud voices, we'll be heard. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been great. One last comment. This is Nidhi here. I just wanted to um, ask a comment, uh, ask a question or make a comment. Um, do we have data on uh, the disability disaggregation on, on people with what kinds of disabilities have been participating so that we also know what are the access barriers more for or make an effort to have intentional inclusion of people across other disabilities? And the second, if there is a thematic analysis of the panels or the interventions that persons with disabilities have been invited or have been able maybe, to put maybe together. Maybe I can tell you that Derek has been doing work on that, but I don't think Data. that's a question for this meeting. Can you talk, talk okay. to uh, Derek after the meeting? Brilliant, okay. Because that's where, that's where you get it. Derek does data mining and has been researching. I know he's been data mining. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call it at that, and I'm going to take ev thank everyone in the room. I'm going to take, thank everyone who participated remotely, even if we couldn't hear them, they could hear us and could text us. Thank you to Kaioro here on my left, who's been wonderful for the last month or so leading up to today. Thanks for all the accessibility services. Thanks to everyone. Let's keep in touch. And I do intend to follow, and I was going to say, I'm going to follow what Derek was saying. We're going to try and have meetings well in advance of Berlin so we can discuss these accessibility issues and not just in the last month or so before the meeting. With that, thank you and enjoy the rest of IGF 2018. Thanks and goodbye.